Previously on AI The Somnium Files. Is this it? Yeah, this is where I met Renju for the first time. Didn't think this was your kind of spot. This place is special. Mama should be here soon, though. Oh, who are you? Tate, honey. Long time no see. Ah, my eyes. <laughs> you mean like, uh, you mean like this watch? So, you want to explain what the fuck a cop is doing in my office? Yeah! I'm coming for you! Enough of that, back to the video. Oh, Date. Oh, hi. What's wrong? You look like you have a lot on your mind. Yeah. I just found out online. Da, ah, Blasa, hi. <laughs> Thanks for the raid, my guy, again. <laughs> it's a raid. Oh. That was Renju's ex wife, wasn't it? Yeah. Thank you so much for the support, my guy. Hope you had a good stream. So that. Was Mizuki's mom? Yes, it was. Oda. Mizuki saw her own mom. Yeah, can you do you, you know why she feels so horrible now? And I just, I just left her. Boy. But I didn't know. I knew her as Shoko Nadami. Her last name is different. I mean, yeah, that's fair enough. I didn't know that was Mizuki's mother. It's fair enough to you, I guess. I want to apologize to her. I need to tell her that I'm sorry. Well, I mean. There is still some stuff I need to talk to you about, um, Oda. About, um, Renju's case. Do you know anything? Uh, I don't know anything. I've only seen Renju a couple of times. I didn't think it was possible to be this bad at lying. Though it is plainly obvious, I did a thermal check on Ota's body. This is his current body temperature. Why are you doing this? That's what I thought. Have you forgotten, Ota? You're my thrall. You don't want me to tell Iris your secret, do you? Huh? Well, wait. It's no big deal. I just... You better start talking. Okay. Yes, you better start talking, Oda. Last night, I was walking over to Sunfish Pocket. As usual. And I saw Renju come out of the building. Was he alone? Are you lying or are you not lying? Someone was with him. A man. Wow, you're just like reading his body language. Quite just like that. Oh, okay. He's not lying anymore. So... No. A woman. Um... Wow, it's so obvious. Okay, huh? look. I can tell you're trying to protect her, but you have to help me out here. Was it Iris? Oh boy. N no, it definitely for sure wasn't Tessa. You got liar! It. So Renju was with Iris. Oh, oh no. Okay, fine. There's no <laughs> point in hiding it, I guess. I mean, if he can read your body language and your, your internal temperature with his eye. You're right. There's no point in hiding. There is Renju a... came out of the building with Tessa. Oh boy. Tessa has nothing to do with this. She's a witness to a homicide, my guy. She wouldn't murder anyone. She wouldn't hurt a fly. That's what you think. She's an idol. Idols don't kill people. Oh, uh, you'd be wrong. I'm not sure whether or not he's wrong or not. But let's just say he's wrong for, this, for the hell of it. You need to stop putting her on a pedestal. Tessa is a savior to me. <laughs> Bitch. The Tessa I know wouldn't hurt anyone. But I mean... You might not know the Tessa who might hurt someone. A savior? The first time I met her, I had a bad case of writer's block. Kids. I saw all this awful negativity online and I lost sight of what I really wanted to write. It was the lowest point of my life. You're 24. He is talking like a professional, though he hasn't published anything. Yeah. Then, by pure chance, I found a video of Tessa singing and dancing and it made me realize something important. You don't have to care what people think, you know? If you do your best at what you believe in, your message will get through to people. Okay, fair enough. That one makes that point does make sense. Yes, I agree with this. That attitude is something all great creators need to have. After that, I became a huge ASET fan and got over mm. my writer's block. Well, I fair enough, and I, know I guess. I'm not the only one Tessa has inspired. You're she's a, like a she's a Twitch influencer, am I right? Am I right? A lot am of right, otaku like me say that Tessa is their savior. She cheers them up when they're down. It's probably because of her looks. So there's no way Tessa can be involved in murder. Absolutely impossible. And if I find evidence to the contrary, young man? Slow down, I didn't say Iris is the murderer. But do you suspect her? I need to hear her side of the story. If I do, I might find out she's totally innocent. If you truly believe that she didn't do it, you should tell me everything you know. Yep, 
You should. What? Do it for Iris. Emotional blackmail. I like that. What time in Ranger and Iris? Is Around 6.15, I guess. Where did they go? I didn't see. They got into Renju's car and drove off. Oh, boy. And what did you do? I went inside Sunfish Pocket, but I saw a sign that said the entire club was reserved. That's strange. I figured I would just go home. And then? You didn't- you clearly you didn't go home. What happened? <laughs> Your face is telling you another story. Date. Iris, there's something I need to ask you. Come with me. This isn't the type of camera you think you'd be in front of her. I'm going to ask you some questions. Please answer honestly. However, you do not have to say anything that might incriminate you. And you say you can and will be used against you in a court of law. The right to remain silent? You're treating me like a criminal. Not exactly. I'm just looking for the truth, and I would appreciate your cooperation. That is layered with several levels of deep threats right there. Okay, Iris. I could probably ask the alibi question second, so I'll ask her if she worked at Selfish Pocket first. I heard you used to work at Sunfish Pocket. That's right. Yep. How long? A little over a year. Okay. Working there that long, you're probably pretty familiar with the equipment. Yeah, I guess. Ooh. So now we have to open up a question about the surveillance camera. Okay, so the surveillance camera thing, um, when we went to back to Sunfish Pocket with Mizuki to investigate the scene again with all the policemen around, we looked at the surveillance camera, the surveillance footage was white and there was no backups. So that's the reason why this question exists. Uh, about the surveillance cameras. What about the surveillance camera? Do you know where those tapes were stored? What are you trying to say? Oh, stress. <laughs> Do you have an alibi for last night? What were you doing from seven to nine last night? I was at home the whole time. You're sure? Yes. Iva, thermograph. There is no noticeable rise in Iris's body temperature. So she's telling the truth then. And Oda did say that she left the building with Renju at like 6. So he must have been driving her home, I guess? Or something? She isn't lying. Not necessarily. We must consider the possibility that she is a natural liar. Oh, with that kind of confidence, her temperature wouldn't change. Wow. Correct. Renju's estimated time of death was 8pm last night. If Iris' story is true, she couldn't have done it. See, here's what I think. First of all, we had evidence back in the cafe that Renju was roughly 150 pounds. Uh, they, someone strong must have carried him because I'm assuming an 18 year old girl like this wouldn't be able to carry a 150 pound dead weight, you know? I figure it's not her because she couldn't have physically done it herself. I don't think she has the creativity to know about the MO. Well, I mean, she, I mean, she knew about the, 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 uh, the MO of Shoko's death, but she doesn't have a reason, at least not yet. There is another possibility. Maybe two person, yeah, you're right, Blasta, but I mean, it's considering that we've got two victims, a ton of evidence, but no but it's all circumstantial, doesn't point to any single person as the killer. I mean, it's too early, to, it's still too early to say. Even if Iris was at home, she could have killed Renju. Huh? You mean. Oh, her mother. Can I ask your mother about your alibi? I'll ask again. You are sure you were at home around 8 p.m. yesterday? Yes. Can I ask your mother about your alibi? You can, but there'd be no point. Why is that? My mom was at home. She came back home early this morning. This morning? Yeah. Where was she? I don't know. You don't know? Wow. Come to think of it, Iris's mom had connections to Renju too. Hitomi did mention that yesterday. They were childhood friends, I think. I remember correctly. Yeah, they were childhood friends. Renju was my classmate. Yeah, they were, they were classmates. We've known each other for 20 years now. Damn, that's a long time. Could it? However, we have nothing to link her to the case. They did mention that the watch... Okay, so in the cafe, we found a gold, a gold watch, kind of like this one, but gold, in an oil drum. And we went to a bar that range through frequency and the bartender told us that the watch that the watch was given to him by his lover this is after the divorce carried a train of thought with me for uh, for a while what if what if her mother was his lover we have only one way to find out but i am curious what was it doing last night uh when did you find out Renji was killed 
When did you find out Renju was killed? This morning, on the news. And you were with Renju last night? You didn't think to call the police and inform them of this? Oh, sorry. Is that something you're supposed to do? Duh! I had a podcast to record this morning, so if I went to the police, I'd be late. And that would cause everyone a lot of trouble, you know? It's... This girl has her priorities in the wrong place. There's all the stories Here's what Ota told me. Yesterday around 6.15 p.m., you and Renju came out of the Sunfish Pocket Building. Okay. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Mr. Okiura called me and told me he wanted me to come to Sunfish Pocket ASAP. Huh. Around what time that's was a, that? That's... That... Five Good PM, eye, Blessa. It might be a it might be a tell. I got ready, then headed over there. Might be a tell. I guess I got there about an hour later. Date, I checked her call history. At 4.58 p.m., there is a record of a call to Iris from Renju's phone. Okay, so she's telling the truth. But, but what were you doing with Renju, though? What were you doing with Renju? He asked me about a job. What kind of job? He rented out Sunfish Pocket for a party and he wanted me to MC. He said that it was an important party and that a lot of big shots were going to be there. Yakuza. But the girl he asked to do it originally got sick and couldn't come. But I turned him down. Oh. Why? Because I'm just an internet idol. I've never done any MCing before, especially with important people being there. Wow. What did you do after you turned him down? Did he just drive you home or what? What did you do after you turned him down? I left with Mr. Okira. To go where? At 6.15 p.m. That must have been when Ota saw me. And after that? I asked Mr. Okira to take me home in his car. I got home at 7 p.m. I was home the rest of the night. What do you think, Aiba? I cannot detect any contradictions. However, her story appears almost too organized. Yeah. Human memory is ambiguous. It's like she rehearsed the her story. Her use of exact times leads me to be suspicious. She rehearsed the story. It's true. Yeah. Am I a suspect? It's not like that. It's fine, Date. It's true that I met with Mr. Okiura yesterday, but how do I put this? It's impossible that I'm the killer. Why? I'm a teenage girl. Mr. Okiura is a fully grown man. Oh, she's got a point. A girl like her could have stabbed, poisoned, or shot him dead, but strangling? No, it's still possible. You see, Iris gonna kill. Oh, so now we're doing this Ali Noir style. Nice. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? The autopsy report. Where Renju was murdered. Uh, discovery of Renju's body. Uh, I can. Look Renju's at corpse was discovered at the maid cafe, Sunfish Pocket, hanging from a beam on the ceiling by a wire. He was found over the counter. The wire was attached on both ends. One end was attached to a hook that was embedded inside Renju's jaw. The other end was attached to beer kegs found on the floor. The kegs hold approximately 20 liters of liquid. They weigh approximately 55 pounds each. So that's 5, 10, 15, 15, 565 pounds. So that way they counterbalance the weight of his corpse. The autopsy discovered a high concentration of benzodiazepine in Renju's body. This drug is commonly used as a sedative. It is likely that Renju was in a state of compromised consciousness before his death. But why would you... But how would a teenage girl get her hands on a high dose of benzo to drug someone and then strangle them? I know this watch. It's Renju's favorite. I found it inside an oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. That means... It was discarded? The oil drum inside Sunfish Pocket. The type that has a lid you can open, with about a 200 liter capacity. Empty, it weighs approximately 44 pounds. 44 plus 150 is 100... 165, sorry, is 200 pounds. And in the elevator... Sunfish Pocket is located on the second floor. According to the records, from 6.30 p.m. until the body was found, the elevator stopped on the second floor only once. Ota? But he doesn't have any- At 8.55 p.m., the total weight detected in the elevator was approximately 310 pounds. Okay, uh, I need a pencil. I need, I need a pen because I need to do some bit of math. Uh, Oda, I don't think you would have access to the benzos, do you? Okay, so three. Okay, so three hundred and ten pounds was the weight of the elevator when it was um, recorded around the time of its death. Um, the body is one hundred and sixty-five pounds. Uh, okay, so you minus that. Uh, so three ten minus one hundred sixty-five is one hundred and fifty-five pounds. So, 155 pounds is roughly the weight of the three beer kegs. 
either that or it's her, or the oil drum. Let's try the watch. Iris could have choked Renju to death. If you are searching for proof of this, you will not find it here. Okay, come on. So it's not the watch. Renju weighs approximately a 160 pounds. Okay. What can do with it? Um, where was he the murdered? The autopsy determined that Renju vacated his bowels from muscle relaxation upon death. However, no trace of this was found on the corpse or at the scene. This means that it is highly likely Renju was killed elsewhere and moved to where he was found. No, okay. Not it. No, I made a mistake. Seriously? The sedation? A heavy concentration of sedatives were discovered in Renju's body. I want to see the logic behind Renju this. was practically in a coma before he died. He wouldn't have struggled. So, Iris could have strangled him. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. Even if I was somehow able to kill him, the rest of it is impossible. The rest of it? Like hanging up his body? How do you know that? What do you mean? It's all over the news. That's true. Renju weighed about 160 pounds. Even if she used her entire body weight, I don't think she could have hauled him up. Maybe she had help. Right. Maybe. It would be hard for her to do it with her strength alone. But with a little ingenuity, it could be done. Ingenuity? Wow, can we lift it up to the ceiling? It's the, um, uh, this one? Yeah, it's this one. It's the kegs. You see, the beer kegs. It went like this. First, Renju was laid out on the counter. Next, the wire was thrown over the beam and connected to the hook in his jaw. Then all you need to do is put the three beer kegs on the counter. You think a teenage girl could have done that? I'm sure it was hard. The kegs weighed 55 pounds each. That's not impossible, even for a teenage girl. I guess it isn't impossible. After that, you get on top of the counter, hook the other end of the wires to the kegs, and then, what do you think happens if you kick the kegs off the counter? The three kegs weighed 165 pounds altogether. Renju weighs five pounds less. Hmm, I guess that would make it possible. But- But, there is one more thing. What? Considering the state of the crime scene, it's clear Renju was killed elsewhere and brought to where we found him. If Iris is the culprit, how did she move the body? Hey! I know, I know. You're going to say you couldn't have moved a 160-pound body. Unfortunately for her, she could have. How? The oil drum and the elevator record. Hmm, maybe. Oh no. Renju's weight? Uh... It's there. It's the barrel. Damn. Oh yeah, and it's because the watch is in the barrel, that's right. Do you know what this is? It's I hope Ranger's your favorite Kingdom Hearts watch. stream went well. This was discovered inside an empty oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. Hey, Date, I know you're on a roll right now, but could you please report things like that according to protocol? Oh dear. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that it wouldn't be so hard to move a body if it were in a cylinder. You would just have to roll it. Nice. So you're saying Renji's nice, body was moved inside the drum, which is how the watch came off. But the suspect didn't notice it. I'm not saying anything for sure. Just pointing out that it's possible. I didn't do it! You don't even have any witnesses! If I were rolling an oil drum in the middle of the street, people would have noticed! You could have put it in a car and driven it. I don't have a license! Doesn't mean you can't drive. Even an AI can drive nowadays. Are you mocking me? <laughs> don't make sudden outbursts like that. You insulted me! Just be quiet. Um... I'm talking to who the... are you talking I'm to? I'm talking to the AI in my, in my eyeball. Anyway... Iris, you weigh about 105 pounds, right? W where is this coming from? Wow, nice. If only you weighed more. Or less. That is none of your business. No, I mean that your weight is relevant to the case. If the oil drum was used to transport the corpse, then the possibility of the suspect being around 105 pounds is extremely likely. Why do you say that? It's because the oil drum weighs a certain amount. The elevator records show that, um, that there is a certain weight, you know? Iris, on which floor is Sunfish Pocket located? On the second floor. That's right. So, I checked the elevator records. Before the corpse was discovered, the elevator only stopped at the second floor once, at 8.55 p.m. And we discovered that the total cargo weight on the elevator was about 310 pounds. Renju weighed 160. 
The oil drum weighs 44. Together, that's about 205. 204. Sorry. Subtracting that from 310. This doesn't look good. Oh no. Why are you? Now, this obviously doesn't prove you're the murderer. A lot of people weigh 105 pounds. It's all very circumstantial. Or someone could have put 105 extra pounds in the elevator, sent it up, and taken the stairs to throw us off the trail. However, Dante, stop. Iris is acting strange. Don't turn around. Why not? Just stay put. Keep your eyes on the wall. There are several cameras in this room. Two surveillance cameras installed at the corners of the ceiling, and one camera on a tripod. I hacked each to gain access to their recordings. Look at this. What is she doing? She's using her phone under the table. She's fidgeting around. Is she doing something under the desk? That's what it looks like. But we need to confirm something before we confront her. We need to know that she's in fact doing something under the desk. I think she's fiddly with Without her phone. Turning around? Yes. How would I do that? Move to this camera. Ah! Recording the wall. The, or the, or the one-way mirror. Yes, yeah, she's using her phone. Ah, shit! Wow. Okay. Iris, what are you thinking? That was a good guess, Blasa. What is that thing? That was a that was a good job. Hey, answer me, Iris. She's definitely hiding something, Date. Sync with her. <gasps> oh boy, we get to delve into another Iris girl's memories. Is Nice. How about it, Date? Think you can do it? Of course. Not a problem. Get it started. The time limit is six minutes. So before time is up... I know. Then, let's begin. Yeah, she's definitely covering up for someone or hiding. So she's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, covering up for someone or hiding something. I just need to figure out what. that maybe like Tomi was in love with Renju? 